What's up guys, welcome to Honey Hole Angling. Today I got Gabe on the vise with me. We're gonna be tying the redfish crack. It's a great fly for redfish down here on the Texas coast. Really easy and effective pattern. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Gabe's gonna get right into it. Yeah, what's going on? So yeah, we're just gonna tie this up. Uh, it's kind of a variant. We're again, another week of just rolling what, what Landon has on, on it, which he's got quite a bit of materials, but we were just kind of talking like, man, what, what should we tie? And this, uh, this kind of came to mind. So um, yeah, this is a straightforward pattern, nothing crazy on it. Looks looks pretty cool, like there's a lot of stuff, but you need a couple of markers and uh, some, some craft fur or pseudo hair, in which case we have here, but this is what it looks like. It's, ours is gonna look a little bit different. We're just gonna change the color up on this, um, on this back uh, pearl color, but it's still gonna be the same. And you can do it whatever colors you guys want. So whatever y'all have at hand is, is gonna work. It's just a, it's just a really good fly. Yeah, exactly. It's just a really good fly on it. Um, we're going to be using a, a Gamagatsu uh, B10S in a size, I think, four. Four. Yeah, in a size four. And you guys can use like a saltwater hook too. I mean, this is a saltwater fly, but the I just like the Gamagatsu hook because the wide gap, the B10S. It's such a such a good versatile hook. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, I use it for a lot of stuff for sure. So yeah, we're just going to lay down a base layer of some thread. Again, nothing crazy. Uh, in this one, we're gonna use a small uh, double pupil uh, eye. And again, just like if you've tied a Clouser minnow, same thing here in setting down our eye on top. Just do some cross wraps and then I'll slow this down. You see how I'm kind of coming between the hook shank and then back around, but it's really between the hook shank and the eye. And that's just pushing it up. It's pushing it up to uh, lock in place after we've done our cross, our cross um, thread wraps there. So I'm going to forward my materials towards the back. And I'm going to stop right around the bend of the hook. Nothing too crazy again. And then I'm going to start prepping our cactus chenille. And and he's having to clear off all the pseudo hairs that, <laughs> that we've been cutting off. Place. So I'm going to pull uh, some of the pieces of that chenille away, exposing the two pieces of thread. Again, just kind of helping to limit bulk. I'm going to tie that down. And I want this, as we wrap, to be kind of, if we look at the hook shank, if we look at the hook shank going straight across, it's kind of towards that bend. So we're wrapping up in the shank, just like you would like a woolly bugger, but I'm not on the straight part yet of the hook shank. I'm still kind of on the bend of the hook. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie that down. And I'm gonna push back some of that that hair, I'm gonna kind of hold it with my fingers. That forces it back. Yeah, that forces it back. So it has that nice clean look. And it gives us room to tie on our- Pseudo hair. Our pseudo hair. All right, cool. So we're getting the, um, our craft fur. Landon, which one is this one? This is not craft That's fur. pseudo hair. Pseudo hair, that's right. Which is really hard to find, or was really hard to find a couple of years ago. So what we're doing is just kind of brushing it out. You can see how this is usually how it'll look like a bad hair day, um, but we're just kind of cleaning it out. We're gonna get a lot of under, under hair, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna pick up kind of a section of what I wanna use, and you might have to do this one or two times, but it's not a huge deal as you, as you kind of build up the materials for the tail. So I'm gonna cut some off. Probably cut like another little, little bit off. And then once I get that ready, I'm gonna kind of line them up like you would do with deer hair. Um, you know, or There's gonna be a lot of hair going everywhere. Yeah, there is, it's really lightweight. So. so then again, I'm just gonna move some of these, kind of reshift them down. Still keeping my taper. Kind of pulling that top part off, just kind of keeping it taper. Now, as you can see, the issue we're going to run into is on the bottom of it, we've got this big clump of just a lot of material. So it's like, here's what our tail looks like, and then here's that that bottom section. So again, um, we're going to just take a little bit 
out, we can kind of brush it out to get that under hair. And a lot of that hair isn't even long enough anyway to look um, at the tail. So we're just kind of cleaning that up and trying to get what we can. And you're gonna cut that down before you tie it in. Exactly, I'm gonna cut that down, but I'm just trying to really take off the bulk of that, um, of that bit. So we've taken quite a bit or that under fur out as you can see and that's all short stuff you can use this for dubbing you can use that for for other flies but again i just really want to clean this up so that it just sits down better so here's our tail and then we'll cut more of that underbelly to our down to size so that's going to be our tail right there yep all right, so now we've got our pseudo hair ready. This one's a little bit thin. You can go a little bit thicker if you want. Again, nothing to, just whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna tie that down. You don't have to make sure you capture all those hairs because this is gonna be covered up. Yeah, put a little bit of tension on it. Uh, don't leave it too loose. Because then, you know, again, as you brush some stuff out to, to kind of straighten it up, it gets, uh, it'll get too loose, it'll come out of you. So if you want to put a comb through to kind of brush it out, that's where we're talking about putting a little bit of tightness on it so that um, it doesn't come loose on it. So uh, I've got two of these uh, pris prism color, pris, pris, how do you pronounce that? Prisma color. Prisma Mark color, there you Markers. go. Markers, I usually use the Copics and to do it, but it is not a big deal here. I'm gonna use the broad side. Actually, I'm gonna start with orange and then um, double over with brown. So here's our orange. But you can use Sharpies too, or whatever markers you yeah, have. Yeah, Sharpies are fine. There we go. And now I'll come back with our brown to give it kind of like a cool, like double tone. Is this necessary? No. Does it look fantastic? Yes. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Cause it kind of gives it like that 3D pop on it. Um, next, we're gonna add some UV polar chenille, but you can use like any type of wide Palmer chenille is yeah. another material we were looking at. And that's what's on the, you know, the one that we were showing before we started tying. So again, I'm just gonna kind of brush this back. Let me get a base going. And I keep, you know, I wanna get some of these materials out. So I'm gonna brush it back. And I'm gonna, as you can see, I'm kind of pulling back on it, going in the, direction towards the hook. I don't wanna, I wanna leave a little bit of room up front still. All right, we'll lock that in place. If you wanna brush this out now, that's fine. You don't have to, because we're gonna brush out our next material that we have anyway. And so it'll, it'll straighten that all up. Okay, so now that we've got that down, our next material is gonna be some EP uh, tarantula in a sculpin color. This is a one inch brush. It has rubber legs in it. Yeah, it has rubber legs. As you can see, it's got, it's got the EP, and then in the middle of that are some little rubber legs. So it looks, it just gives it a cool, cool buggy look to it. So again, I'm gonna try to brush some of that materials back as I'm tying forward. And it's not going to be perfect right now, but we're going to brush this out oh, after. Yeah. So it's going to really pop once we brush it out. Yeah, this kind of just gives us a start as we're working to. And then just one wrap in front of the next. We're going to get to our front there. I'll do one more. Brushing back and then pulling down. And once I have that, because I have the eyes on the top part, it's a little bit tougher to get a straight cut. So that's why I'm gonna flip the fly over 
And I can take our wire color, cover, uh, wire cutter, excuse me, and pop that. Don't use your flat tying scissors for this. Yeah, don't don't use that. Your nice loon scissors are gonna be dull after one attempt at cutting the wire. All right. So again, we've got that. This point we're gonna whip finish. You can whip finish behind the eyes if you want. If you want to come to the front, and kind of tie off a little bit more. So we can add some glue. We're gonna, in this case, we've got some loon. What do we have here? We got loon. Um, UV clear. UV clear. Flow. Flow. And you just need a little bit and then it instantly dries with a UV light. Okay. As opposed to having to wait for super glue to dry. Yeah, it's gonna, with the flow, it really does exactly that. It's not bulky too much where it stays on top, this one will actually go into the thread. And that's what we want. We want that to kind of um, pop into the thread. And then we'll take our UV light. And they say not to look at the UV light while you're using it. It's not good for your eyes. I don't know if that's true or not, but close your eyes, look away, <laughs> let it finish. Yeah, I mean, I usually don't have the light like in front of my face. I mean the blue hue that's coming there. I'll look at it, but I'm not looking at like the light bulb itself. And uh, get that. So now that's locked in place, that's dry, which is what we want. And we're gonna come back with our, with our comb. And we're gonna kind of just clean this up here. So we've got that. We're gonna kind of just pick this off. I don't wanna get too hard. I don't wanna rip some of these rubber legs off by going too hard. I'm just kind of catching it and pulling it. And then I'm gonna grab our a loon uh, brush to kind of get wake up those EP fibers. So comb it forward, and then finish it off and comb it back. So it gives it a nice, really cool, buggy-looking profile with. Uh, that EP underneath and those rubber legs. I think that thing looks awesome right there. Sweet. Well, guys, thanks for watching the video. In the description, we will have links to all the materials if you want to order them. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next fly tying video.